organizers for inviting me it's always great to be here uh, so I'm gonna the stuff I'm gonna talk about is motivating is uh, being motivated by an old question of Woodin so let me introduce the problem so the question is can we consistently get failure of SCH together with failure of weak square at alpha omega. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna motivate a little bit why uh, uh, this is interesting, give uh, some of the classical results about it, and then report on basically just some observation, observations how precre type forcing is and its properties are relevant to this question. And uh, then I'll end, so I think in the end the conclusion of the story is that so, uh, so this problem remains open that with at least the known technology of pre reforcing it looks kind of hopeless to give a positive answer, but maybe that's an indication that the answer is no. Okay. So, let me just uh, give some definitions. So recall the singular cardinal hypothesis at, uh, and I'm gonna do it for the strong limit version, at a singular kappa, says the following, if kappa is singular strong limit, then two to the kappa is kappa plus. So this is uh, you know, just a parallel of CH for um, uh, singular cardinals. So one thing, really to note here, since we're gonna be talking about, about failure of SCH, is that failure of SCH is you know, like an anti-reflection principle. In particular, to violate SCH, what does one need to do? One needs to have a singular cardinal kappa, where the power set function below kappa is small, but it blows up a cap. So, let me write this. Violation of SCH can be, is viewed as a, like an anti-reflection type principle. Okay. So, while well, I'm waiting for this, I'm gonna also give the definition of square. So as we know, a weak square and the square hierarchy is also an anti-reflection type principle. So in particular, the failure of weak square is a reflection time principle. And this uh, is uh, morally the reason why it's hard to get them together. So recall again, the definition of so I'm gonna do both, weak square and a full square. So square at kappa says that there exists a sequence C alpha, alpha less than kappa plus, such that for alpha limit, such that each C alpha is a club in alpha of order type less than or equal to kappa, and the sequence is coherent if beta is a limit point of C alpha, then C alpha intersection beta is C beta. Okay. And weak square is uh, a weakening of this principle where we allow up to kappa many guesses for 
the cloud. So weak square is the existence of a sequence script C alpha, alpha less than kappa plus, where each script C alpha has size uh, up to kappa and For every C in C alpha, C is as over there, a club in alpha of small order type, order type of C is less than or equal to kappa, and if beta is a limit point of C, then C intersection beta is an element in script C beta. So, Now, what is, uh, looking at this principle, so uh, weak square is weakening, but both of these principles are anti-compactness type principle. Namely, now that, for example, it's impossible to get a club through kappa which will thread this sequence. So in particular, the failure of these principles is a reflection type property and this is why it's so hard in most cases to get a situation where both of these uh, principles hold. And this is why it makes it interesting. Now, what do we know so far? So uh, until uh, maybe 10 years ago or so, this question was uh, also asked about whether one can get failure of SCH and uh, weak failure of weak square at any cardinal kappa. And in 07, so this is kind of like the key result in this history, uh, in the history of this problem was by Gittik and Sharon who showed that it's consistent, so starting from a super compact, it is consistent to get failure of SCH at kappa and failure of weak square at kappa for just any singular kappa and then they did it for, um, they showed that one can obtain this for alpha omega squared, so let me write this, can obtain it <coughs> for kappa equal alpha omega squared. Okay. So I'm gonna, and uh, so this is remark, well, let me just say it. Uh, basically this is the only known model to get failure of SCH and failure of weak square. I mean there are other models but they all use uh, their precrit type forcing which I'll define at some, in a little while. Come now, okay. So, is it coming? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, since uh, uh, the title of my talk is Precrit Type Forcings, uh, next I'm going to talk a little bit about just in general Precrit Type Forcings and what effect we expect them to have on a uh, weak square, either holding or failing. Now, why are they relevant in solving this? Well, in general, to get failure of SCH, one, uh, what one does is force with prickery. So, this is like the main point here. They're used to get failure of SCH. So, we definitely have to understand them in order to try answering this question. So let me first give a very quick definition of just the uh, old-fashioned vanilla prickery. So let definition kappa be a measurable cardinal. You a measure on kappa, normal measure. Then 
P is the forcing with conditions that are pairs S A where S is an initial segment finite initial segment of ordinals in kappa not initial segment just a fi finite um, increasing set of ordinals in kappa A is a measure one set and Now, if uh, P adds, so this is just a regular venue, pre -cree, classical pre -cree. P adds a sequence alpha n, n less than omega through kappa, singularizing kappa, and what well, preserving cardinals. So, Just a very quick application. So suppose we start with kappa something big, you know, bigger than measurable. How does one use this forcing to violate SCH? Well, so there are two steps. So for, uh, for those of you who are not in the forcing community, so, and, uh, but care, uh, the alpha, <laughs> Yeah, so how does one get the sequence? It's the union of the first coordinates of the generic condition. So step one, blow up the power set of kappa, make two to the kappa big. Let's say, let's say make it kappa double plus, and then use pre -cre to singularize kappa. Use this forcing P, to make kappa singular, so to make cough kappa equal omega. Now, by the nature of the forcing, no bounded subsets of kappa are added, so in the end, one gets failure of SCH at kappa, simply because kappa remains a singular strong limit in the final extension, and its power set is big. Yeah, that's why, so I, I mean, I think I did say it. You start with something more than measurable. So you want to do this so that after you blow up the power set, kappa is still measurable. So for example, let's start with, you know, labor indestructibility, do the cohen forcing, and then pre -cree. Yeah, you need more than measurable. Okay, so people who are interested in this, answering this question, I mean, their uh, first, uh, the first thing they did was, okay, so we have our uh, regular pre forcing. What is the effect of this forcing P on weak square, right? This is the natural question to ask. On weak square at kappa. Well, uh, it adds it. So this is just a, in fact, P forces, actually forces more. P forces square <coughs> kappa omega uh, to hold. Where square kappa omega is a uh, similar definition as in weak square, but the cardinality of the script C alpha is omega. So it certainly implies weak square. Uh, let me actually do facts here of life. So pre forcing does this. Well, it turns out that something even much more general happens, and this is um, uh, so the, this is due, I think, independently by uh, it appears in a paper of Mirna and Shella and Gitik. And I think Menahem had something to do with it at one point. If we have just two, no, not talking about forcing in general, two models V subset W such that 
kappa is uh, inaccessible in V singular in W and cardinals are preserved, so same cardinals then in W we do have weak square, I mean again we actually have more square cap omega. Okay. Uh, Co-finality omega. Yes. You're right. Cough omega. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually not known if uh, for uncountable co finality. Okay. Um so okay. and then uh, in um, like a paper with Menahem, uh, him and I were able to actually generalize this to the following situation if V and W are, so V is the inner model, W is the outer model, kappa inaccessible in V singular in W, so cough W kappa equals omega and so in this situation we don't require to, uh, the cardinals to be the same so we allow cardinals to be collapsed so suppose let mu be uh, kappa plus with respect to w so suppose Mu was a successor of a regular successor uh, of a regular in V. Then again we have square kappa omega holding in the outer model. So what does this say is that if uh, both uh, the second and the third items that what happens by the, uh, just uh, doing the prick reforcing actually also happens when you don't talk about forcing at all, just um, when you singularize an inaccessible cardinal as long as its new successor used to be a successor of a regular in the inner model then you get square cap omega. Okay. So what is the story, uh, what is the conclusion here is that the only you know, way to get a failure of weak square while singularizing, uh, via a forcing that singularizes a cardinal is if the new successor of it started off as still being a successor of a singular in the inner model and that's exactly what uh, the construction in Gittig Sharon is. So next, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Okay, which one is this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I have to listen to Bob and I mean, he's the organizer. <laughs> I want to come back here. Number three is capital preserved. Uh, the way I stated, yes, you can actually get a result when kappa is not a cardinal, then the, you get weak square at mu minus. Yeah. Uh, written, let, let me say kappa, cap, uh, cardinal. cardinal. Oh, well, yeah, the, it has to be, right? Otherwise, this notation wouldn't make sense. 
I mean, uh, the precise statement of our theorem is something a little more general, but let's keep it. Uh, let's keep Kappa cardinal. So what happens in the, um, let me, I wanna do a little description. of the gitik sharon model, Ron trick reinforcing. Okay, so they start with kappa super compact, so S C always means super compact. <coughs> and let mu be kappa plus omega plus one, so successor of a singular. And get a forcing extension where kappa is a singular cardinal of cofinality omega, so kappa cardinal. And the new successor of kappa used to be the old kappa plus omega plus one. Okay, so this situation kind of complements that situation where the new successor of kappa used to be a successor of a regular. Yeah. And what is uh, G is um, a generic, for, so what does G uh, do? The forcing here. So G adds a sequence, so a precre type sequence, xn, n less than omega. such that each xn is in p kappa, kappa plus n. Um, the union of the xn's is, I guess, the old kappa plus omega in V. So now that this, uh, adding such a sequence will collapse all cardinals between kappa and mu and will make mu the successor of kappa, why? I mean, these are sets of size uh, less than kappa through kappa plus n, so each kappa plus n is singularized to have cofinality omega. Kappa plus omega ends up being of um, cardinality kappa and mu becomes the new successor of kappa. And here, you know, as uh, stated over there, here, we do have failure of weak square. Okay. So now, what really is the obstacle of getting this to, uh, for alpha omega? Well, the obstacle is the following. So why, um, obstacle of doing this, for at the end kappa b being alpha omega is the following. So here I should have said two to the kappa is mu plus. So the reason for that is, of course, because you wanna violate SCH in the end. So in particular, in their model, they start by blowing up the power set of kappa and then doing some singularizing. So the obstacle is this fact slash lemma that um, in a different form than the one I'm gonna state it first appeared in a, a Saf Sharon's PhD thesis. Um, and the fact is the following. So let, I'm gonna state it in a most general way. Let tau n and less than omega be an increasing sequence of cardinals, you know, it limits some tau or cardinals. And um, yeah, let mu be tau plus, then the following forcing will add weak square. So then the forcing product collapse, uh, 
Tau and Mu mod finite adds weak square at tau. <laughs> uh, so why is that? Well, basically, well, without writing anything, I'm just going to say it if you look at that half erased definition. So <laughs> our script C alphas, which are uh, the uh, guesses for clubs in alpha, are made up of anticipating what, so maybe I'll say something. So if dot cn is the club in mu of order type tau n that, that this forcing will add, you take initial segments of those dot cns and they, for all our gen, they cohere in a way that uh, satisfies the definition of the weak square sequence. <laughs> Hmm? That you actually again get stronger, you get the square tau omega. No, no, actually, no, you C, don't. You the C and the omega. Well, I mean, we, we take, uh, well, yeah, but, so you don't. You actually have to take subsets of initial segments. Yeah, 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 CNs for all. So the, this is, yeah, I'm going to actually mention a result that all you get is this and not, not much more. Yeah. Okay, so conditions are equ equivalence classes <coughs> where two conditions are uh, the same if for all our gen, the product is the same. Is tau for mu? Hmm? Tau for mu? Yes. And it turns out that when one tries to uh, put collapses into the prick reforcing, the getting strong prick reforcing for alpha omega, you get exactly this situation for the following reason. Oh, but first, before I start talking about that, let me mention like a positive result. And this is uh, with, was with Spencer. That one can actually, so, it is consistent. Can get, Failure of SCH at alpha omega with failure of all of the intermediate squares. With failure of square alpha omega, alpha n for all n. And so here we used. the gitic Charon posit, but with a certain type of interleaved collapses from an inner model. So it was a little bit technical to get, to make kappa be alpha omega in the end. So one can put interleaved collapses for, uh, in the gitic Charon posit, and you can do almost what you want, but not quite. In particular, in our model, we still got weak square to hold. Okay. I have more boards, you say, okay. Uh, so, okay, so next I'm actually going to go more into the definition of this um, 
precre uh, conditions of the Gitic Sharon forcing. So let me do a description. of this posit. So one starts with, so if you remember the regular precre just used one normal uh, measure to singularize uh, the cardinal kappa. So here we're gonna be singularizing more stuff. So let u n n less than omega be normal measures such that each UN is a normal measure on P kappa, kappa plus N. And using each one of those UN, so conditions are of the form. So again, there are two parts. That's the finite part. Uh, the initial segment of the final uh, pre -cre uh, sequence that uh, the forcing is going to add, followed by measure one sets, a n, a n plus one, dot, dot, dot. So in the end, these guys are, okay, so g adds, let me just say, g adds this precre sequence, x n, n less than omega, uh, and this is the union of the finite part of all conditions P in, uh, in G. And next what I want to do is I want to try to give an idea why is it so difficult to put collapses in uh, this model making uh, kappa equal alpha omega while if you're trying to uh, get failure of weak square, namely why it doesn't seem uh, the, uh, why, why it doesn't work, basically, as well. And how is it related to that fact about the product of collapses mod finite adding a weak square? Okay, so how in, um, what happens? So, um, of the case, if we want to make kappa be alpha omega. Okay. So, let me just give some names. So let, again, uh, looking at this model, let lambda n in Vg B kappa intersection x n, so then of course the lambda n's are a singularizing sequence through kappa. Now suppose you want to make kappa be alpha omega. Now what does that mean? That means that the following cardinal will most likely have to be uh, collapsed. So let mu n B lambda n plus omega plus one. Okay, so if in the final model Vg kappa is alpha omega, then we have two cases. and I'm gonna talk about the first one uh, last. One is, uh, I mean, the two cases, mu and is either uh, collapsed or not, but so if mu is not collapsed, then by, okay, mu n is, by PCF facts, 
We have, uh, so then uh, we're in the situation where uh, the predecessor of mu n, which is a singular cardinal lambda n plus omega, is collapsed to something that's non-singular, so it's not even, uh, this is open whether it can be done uh, to begin with, but even if it could be done, by PCF results, um, it follows that the gap between lambda n and mu n cannot be more than four. I mean, it's a, it's a PCI fact that if it is possible to collapse a singular while keeping its successor to something th that is a regular cardinal, in particular, suppose you want to make alpha omega plus one into alpha two, but um, you cannot make alpha omega plus one into alpha uh, five or more. Actually, alpha, yeah, alpha five or more. No, alpha four or more. And for those, uh, for people who know about interleaving pre -cre collapse, uh, collapses into pre -cre type forcing, this type of construction is not going to work. Namely, the, even when you do uh, pre -cre forcing for alpha omega, the finite gap in between the cardinals has to increase in order to get, um, in order to preserve your cardinals. So, in the pre -cre setting, Any such collapse will pre, uh, collapse cardinals. This will collapse kappa. If you start with two to the kappa big. Okay. All right, so that leads us to uh, the other case. So I did say something about this first. Uh, mu n is collapsed. <laughs> So mu n is collapsed, then I claim that we end up in the situation of that fact where the forcing P adds a, um, um, a generic for this collapse is not finite. So if, so let in VG, let's say tau n, which is, you know, some lambda n plus case of n, be the cardinality of mu n. So, back in V, okay, these xn's are taken from an ultra power. So here, I should have written that. Here, uh, g is some hypothetical generic for a forcing that adds a gitic Charon type sequence and has some collapses. In, then in V, we have, so let, let's call it Px, be just some condition forcing that, it has to be the right condition, that x dot n equals x for a measure one set of x's, let's say, let's just say P kappa, kappa plus n, then also in V, let Jn be given by the ultra power by Un, the ultra power Un, okay? 
So I want to look at the reflection of this mu n, which is, you know, supposedly collapsed in the ultra power. So then over m, we have that. Um, It will be forced that uh, the function, let's see. Let me just say mu star n will be collapsed to some t star n, where mu star n is um, So in over M, one can get a condition P star. Um, uh, it's not just the one. Where mu star N is actually you know, kappa plus omega plus one as computed in the ultra power MN. Okay. So in a case of GCH, where this is uh, not the right computation of the ultra power, things work. And this is. Um, this is why one can easily uh, get you know, failure of square at alpha omega uh, using interleaved collapses uh, here as long as you don't blow up the power set of kappa first. But so the, uh, the key question here question is, If f is the function representing the real mu, kappa plus omega plus one in the ultra power, do we have that for almost all x, for almost all un x, fn x is itself a successor of a singular. So this is kind of the key question. And it has been a, hmm? Why is what? What is f sub n? This is, uh, uh, yeah, f. Uh, whether this ultra power computes the successor of a singular by a function, which is the successor of a singular. And I've been actually in the last two days kind of talking to like a, a small group of people about this question. And if he doesn't mind me saying it, I believe that the consensus right now due to Benahim is that the, the answer here is yes, you always have that the successor of a singular by PCF uh, fact being computed by a function that gives you successors of a singular in the ultra power. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, but that's good. I, I, I was about to end this as like a theorem slash hopeless, but. There is one very obscure case in the argument. But what about the scales argument? What about the scales argument? You get a scale in that? Because if the function is broken, as we call the scale, we got a fixed cotonality. Okay. 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 So okay. So maybe maybe there is some, but okay. All right. Um. So I want to, I need to write some more facts here. So this is, you know, again, more facts of life here. For suppose, and I'll relate this to uh, why, why this is the key question. Uh, so suppose P is a, um, is a pre create type notion 
And I don't want to, so this is again from a paper that we have with Spencer, so I don't want to give the precise definition of uh, the precre type notion that we used, but for now you can think something like the getik Sharon posit. Precre type forcing uh, like a diagonal precre type forcing, e.g., as in getik Sharon with some interleaved collapses, etc. And let you know kappa be the cardinal that's singularized again, let mu be the successor of kappa uh, in P, then, well, you need uh, two things if you're uh, thinking about collapses. If P together with the forcing which, uh, so this is the direct extension forcing P less than or equal to star of Q if P less than or equal to Q but they have the same length. So the condition, you know, pre conditions have length, those are the lengths of the finite part. If P together with uh, less than star preserve mu, then starting from um, super compact, one can arrange yeah. failure of weak square at kappa in the final model, and conversely, if this collapses mu, then we're in the situation of, of this fact, then the forcing actually will add the generic for collapses mod finite. So you can think of this the full ordering as this ordering, but you know, mod finite. So otherwise, then I'll raise this up. Otherwise, One does add weak square from, uh, and the reason is that fact. So this is why it's so important to see wh in whether or not P together with uh, the direct extension ordering preserves me or not has to do exactly with the type of function that represents mu in the ultra power. So if it's computed correctly, then uh, it seems hopeless. If it's not computed correctly, then one can do it. Uh, then one can put collapses to get weak square at uh, L of omega. So, so this is still a question, I guess. You have one minute, fact of life. Hmm? You have one minute. That's the fact of life, okay. So let me write. Okay. So let me write a um, uh, 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 theorem by cases. So theorem either, so this is the hopeless case. So suppose, now I have one minute. Suppose P projects to, and one can phrase it more generally, but suppose P projects to gitic Sharon type, uh, the gitic Sharon posit making, while making kappa B alpha omega, and in an inner model, V where two to the kappa is bigger than what I've been calling mu, which is kappa plus omega plus one, then if 
the ultra power computes mu incorrectly, namely a function f such that f of x is not the successor of a singular. Uh, well, I mean, this of course has to be checked, but one should be able to, no, this is not the whole, this, this is the whole. One should be able to to get you know, failure of weak square at alpha omega. Of course, and in both cases, you do get failure of SCH. And hopeless, otherwise, so if it computes it incorrectly, and I was convinced it computes it incorrectly about an hour ago, but we'll see. Otherwise, yeah, he's <laughs> looking at me with a steely glance. <laughs> Otherwise not. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay.